This is the firing room. Launch control for the Apollo missions. This is not a mock-up. These are the very consoles we sat at when <coughs> men first took off to fly to the moon. The tragedy of Apollo 1 has put us a year and a half behind. We were making up for it in one big leap. And we were doing it with a rocket that no man had ever flown before. It was a few days before Christmas, 1968, when Apollo 8 sat on the pad. She was the first of a new kind, a moon rocket. This was the Phoenix, risen from the ashes of Apollo 1. The first Apollo crew did not die in vain. This was to be their testament. Thirty-six stories high, she had been fully fueled throughout the night. The liquid oxygen in her tanks caused ice to form on the outside of the craft. The extreme temperature differences between the air and the sub-zero fuel caused the metal skin of the rocket to expand and contract. Everyone who was on the pad agreed. It was as though the rocket was alive, breathing, straining at the leash. Earlier in the morning, astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders had made their final preparations before taking that long ride out to the waiting spacecraft. The minimum safe distance from a Saturn V at liftoff was three miles. The reason was simple. When fully fueled, the rocket contained the explosive power of an atomic bomb. As the clock counted down, the astronauts and all of us in launch control went through the pre-flight checks, our hands on the controls of the most powerful, most complex machine ever built. It had over two million separate systems, and to bring these men back alive, everything had to work perfectly. Each individual system had been tested, but what we didn't know was how they would perform when all two million began to work together. That moment would come when the countdown clock reached zero. If a maneuvering thruster failed, if communications broke down, if navigation was off by one degree, if any piece of the miles of wiring, circuits, relays, or valves was defective, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders would pay with their lives. As they sat, waiting for launch on that chill December morning, these three astronauts were back to what they had always been, test pilots. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8, right here where it actually happened. Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. It is one of those rare moments when history is not being made, destiny is being embraced.
three stages in Saturn V launch vehicle begin to pressurize. We have firing command, and firing command is in. We are now on the automatic sequence, two minutes, two minutes, 20 seconds. Our status board indicates that all aspects are ready. Instrument unit is ready, spacecraft ready. Final check of the emergency detection system. That will be like our slide. First stage preparations are completed. All systems are ready, okay. Now we're ready to go to Concrete. Stand by motor. Okay, you're on. All systems go. Can you have 45 seconds and counting? stage of the oxygen tank has been pressurized and the pressure is still building up. Coming up at 90 seconds, Mark, T minus 90 seconds and coming. The Apollo 8 uh, crew standing by, spacecraft command Frank Warner, chin level, Bill Anders. We now report that the liquid hydrogen tank on the third stage is pressurized. One minute, 15 seconds. stage. Propellants pressurized at this time as we come up on a 60 second mark by the flight to the moon.
But uh, that's another story.